Reddit. What is the most messed up way you got back at someone that wronged you? Story 1. Back in high school, I dated a girl for six months before she decided it wasn't working out anymore, and she cheated on me with about six guys and stole my iPhone and wallet to buy legal stuff. I wanted to report her to the police as my parents encouraged me to, and to prevent me from doing such, her brother jumped me while I was walking home with his friends and busted open my lip pretty badly, and threatened to end me if I reported him or her sister. This is South Florida, so I believed he would do it. My dad got a new job and we moved to a new city, but I was still pissed about this whole situation, so I did the next best thing. I created two fake Facebook accounts of a random hot girl and guy, spent some time making it look legit with friends and such, and added her brother on Facebook with a girl and my ex with a guy. It wasn't too long before he started flirting quote-unquote me up and tried his best to get in this girl's pants. On the other hand, having already courted my now ex, I knew exactly what to say to charm her to the point that she was in love with me. This is where it all begins to get fun. I started an intimate texting relationship between the brother and sister with me as the intermediate, thanks to Google Voice. Both of them had fairly typical South Florida bodies, so nothing really gave anything away, and I did a fair amount of photoshopping to remove identifiers in the room that may give away anything. This went on for about a month and a half, totaling about 200 or so between the two of them, when I decided to reveal the curtain and send a group of unedited pictures that included key identifiers, face, and rooms. Oh, holy Jesus, how things went down. I only wish I had some way to see how they reacted. Friends who still lived there told me her brother moved in with his dad that week and that they no longer spoke. All in all, about four months till I got my revenge, but it was amazing. Story 2. I have one I'm about to do in a couple of days. See, my parents suck. I've been taking care of them for a while while also going to school and whatnot, and still they're trying to cheat me, pawn my things, etc. But I've become fed up with them. I'm out of town at the moment, but when I get back, the next time they ask me to walk two miles to get them a pack of cigarettes, I will walk outside, around the house, and have a friend with a van come bring my pre-packed stuff out of the basement entrance, leave and stay at my friend's house for a few days until the day my train ticket is planned for, then move 2,000 miles across the country and live with another friend who just got me a job, rendering them worthless pillheads waiting for a pack of Pall Mall menthol 100s for the rest of their sad lives. Story 3. I used to live in a very small town, like 250 to 300 people. We had no stores, gas stations, etc. One day a local guy decided to open up a little store that sold the basics like groceries and rented movies. He hired a few of us high school kids to work the store and promised us $50 a week for the summer to be paid at the end of the summer. We agreed and started working. We gave up summer stocking shelves, cleaning the bathroom, lawn care, and whatever else. Well, the end of the summer comes around. It's our last day of work and he comes by with our paychecks. $50 for each of us for the whole summer. Needless to say, we weren't too happy, but his words were, What are you going to do about it? Drop the key off on my house since you won't need it anymore. We came up with a plan to pay this back. Before locking up the store for the last time, we left a window unlocked. We dropped the key off at the house. Around midnight, we were back at the store. Grabbed as much as we could, cigarettes, money from the register, candy, probably about $1,000 worth of stuff. Locked the window, then left through the emergency exit that had no alarm. There were also no cameras of any kind. The next day, there were cops there. He accused all of us of doing it, but had no proof. He ended up having to shut down the store a few months later because the town heard how he didn't pay us and stopped doing business there. I don't feel bad. Guy deserved it. Everyone in town definitely knew those guys did it, but didn't care because of what the store owner did. Serves him right. Story 4. My ex-girlfriend cheated on me, and she and her roommate at the time had gone to the point in their lease where they were not super fond of each other and kept some distance. Her roommate was smoking hot, kind of bratty sometimes and wasn't fond of my ex, so I decided to make a move on her. Best move ever. The look on my ex's face when her roommate walked me to the door in her underwear after the first night was priceless. We proceeded to do the deed. Loud almost every night for the next eight weeks until the lease was up, and for a while after that. My ex even walked in on us in the living room once. Kind of trashy, but goddamn was it fun. There's no way I felt bad about it. Hey, also, if you didn't know yet, me and a couple of my friends just launched Rufus Rugs. Premium, custom, hand-tufted rugs. Maybe you're just a fan of Nodrito and want to show it off. Or maybe you just love Pokemon and want bus toys on display for everyone. Either way, we can make almost anything. So hit the first link in the description to learn more. Story 5. My dad isn't in the special forces, but he had a super bad temper on him and has been a karate instructor for 45 years. I too grew up with the idea that it was a normal thing to watch your dad square up to people as a result of road rage, or indeed, any incident where rage might be an applicable emotion. My favorite story of his, however, was one I was sadly not present for, or even born yet. But when he was 25, he had an encounter with some bloke over a drinking incident. The way he tells it, this guy had been rammed right up the back of him for miles. Peppering his dangerous driving with multiple gestures mocking him for having long hair, he was a full-on hippie in his youth, right in the thick of the 70s, and claims it put him on the receiving end of no end of hard treatment. 
Though knowing him, I wouldn't be at all surprised if he was just as much to blame for whatever had pissed off this man enough to tail end him for so long. Anyway, it came to a head when my dad eventually pulled over, too pissed off to keep driving, and this guy pulled over beside him. My dad had spotted that the guy had his girlfriend in the car and reckoned the guy was a wannabe hard who was trying to pick a fight to impress her. Him having all the appearances of a free love pacifist, I guess the guy thought my dad would be an easy fight. What he didn't predict is the uncontrollable fury my dad can reach when prodded one time too many. And as the guy opened the driver's door and lifted himself out to meet the gaze of his opponent, my dad had already rounded his car at great speed. Without really thinking, flew towards him and roundhouse kicked the guy square in the face. The force of the kick threw the guy backward into the car. Half back in his seat and half in the lap of his girlfriend, whose anticipatory smile had fallen into open mouth shock. He was fine, just a broken nose, but my dad's favorite part of the story is the disbelieving officers that pulled up soon after. Looking at my dad's small, sheepish, wiry frame, framed by long hair and beard and the tall, hard looking dude with blood gushing down his face, being consoled by his girlfriend and trying to make sense of what happened. Story 6. One time, a friend pranked me by pissing on my food. Four years later, I got him back by putting my pecker in his beer at a bar when he went to the bathroom. He drank the whole thing before I let him know. I don't forget stuff like that. We were at a sports bar drinking and playing pool. My buddy who had pissed on my food, who by the way, did it before they put it on the grill, so sort of a piss marinade, set his beer down to use the restroom. One of my other buddies pointed out that he had left his beer unattended and that I should mess with it because all of my close friends are aware that he had pissed on my food as well and I hadn't really gotten the chance to get him back. Well, I do the first thing that pops into my head. So I grabbed his beer, hit a corner, unzipped my pants, unleashed the beast and put it in his beer. I proceeded to stir his beer a couple more times with it, resheath that bad boy and place his beer back to where it was. When he came back, nobody said anything and he enjoyed his newly stirred, not shaken beer. When he finished, I just asked, remember when you pissed on my sausage? How'd mine taste? He knew. He should have stopped showering for like a week before he did that. Story 7 Friend and I were fishing at a local creek when my friend's brother pulled up. Being the jerk he normally was, he started throwing rocks in the creek to scare the fish and then he threw my friend's bike in the creek. We were 13 at the time. My friend was crying and I felt so bad. I jumped into the creek and got his bike out. Told him we would get his brother back. About a month later we were fishing again and it was the dead of summer. I told my friend today is the day we get his brother back. Caught a two-third pound carp, threw it up on the side of the bank and left it there until we were done fishing. At the end of the night, we went back to his place where his brother's car was sitting on the street. We took the car, sliced it open, and threw it under the driver's seat and rolled his windows three quarters of the way up. The next morning when we woke up and left, I forgot about what we had done. Well, when I rode past JT's car, I noticed the window was kind of black and then I took a closer look, it was covered in flies. I actually got scared because I did not expect a window caked with flies. By the time I got home, I was laughing in tears because his brother was always such a jerk to us. Fast forward to baseball practice about three days later, my friend had a black eye but smiled at me when we made eye contact. His brother flipped out and ran into his house and punched him in the face. His mom flipped out on his brother and the brother was grounded for the rest of the summer. His mom said that my friend would never do such a thing and he played along and acted as if he had no idea. Apparently, the smell never really left the car. He should have nicknamed his brother Lord of the Flies. Hey guys, just a quick side note. If you like listening to the stories and love how I deliver them, please press the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you'll get notified of my future uploads. Thanks, now back to the stories. Story 8 When I was 13, I woke up in the middle of the night to a man laying next to me in my small bed, staring right at me. I looked at him all confused and told myself, Oh silly, you're having a nightmare. So I smiled at him, closed my eyes, and was about to fall back asleep. When he started touching my thigh, two things happened at once. I realized that I was only in my bra and underwear, and that I was definitely not having a nightmare. Fear like I've never felt before gripped every inch of my body and I think I stopped breathing. He started making his way up to my underwear, presumably to take them off. What did I do? I opened my eyes and I kid you not, said, Hold on a second, I have to pee. He looked shocked, but didn't stop me as I wrapped my blanket around my body and proceeded to take a few steps toward my bathroom. Then I noticed that my bedroom door was wide open, so I bolted. I ran to my mom's room, banged on the door and screamed about how there was a man in my bedroom. My mom came out the hallway and had just started reassuring me that it was a bad dream. The man dashed out of my room and toward the front door. My mom froze, but I got the biggest sense of, How the hell dare he try to do that to me? That's when I grabbed a lamp and ripped the cord out of the wall socket. I started chasing him, insanely waving that lamp and screaming all the profanities that my 13-year-old mind has ever heard. I chased that man down the streets when my mom called the police. I lost him somewhere in the dark, but when the police came, got statements and started searching the neighborhood, I got my revenge. They caught him hiding in the bushes, brought him over and asked me to identify him. I marched right up to that jerk, kneed him in the groin, and walked away saying, Hell yes, I want to press charges. Honestly, asking to pee was the best thing she could have said. It didn't escalate any tension, and it made the guy feel like she was okay with what was happening. I'm glad nothing else worse happened. Story 9 
I was being bullied by this kid two years older than me in school, but I didn't want to tell the teachers or my parents because I wanted to handle it myself. Anyway, he wasn't hitting me or anything. He was just calling me names during the day, but hey, I was fine with that. I had plenty of friends to chill out with and he was a lonely bully. So we have to write a physics exam. And we all have those graphical calculators. You can write programs in them and archive them so a RAM reset can delete the programs. Only a default reset can. Right before the exam, he came to me and told me to give him all the cheat programs I had. Well, what he did not know is that I prepared one with the wrong formulas for that jerk. When I transferred the program over to his calculator, I had a huge smile on my face. He got a 6 for that exam, which is equivalent to an F. Sweet, sweet revenge. Story 10. The best revenge is served cold. 11 years ago, I was working almost 24-7 in trying to deal with multiple deaths in the family over the period of a few weeks. No time for anything and going crazy trying to hold it all together. My now ex decided that she wasn't getting enough attention and started messing around on business trips. Eventually, I busted her flat out, taped a phone conversation of her talking with a friend about having an intimate experience in Florida with a bunch of guys. That was it. She knew I had the tape, so denial wasn't an option. I decided to run with the truth instead. I left. Just left. Found a new place to live and at that point, simply spread a few documented facts around. Not rumors, not pooping on someone's property, just handing out documented facts. Mishandling money at work, corporate or state or federal funds, bad news. Misreporting consulting income on her taxes. I wrote to a couple of editors to publications showing where she'd plagiarized materials. We're both academics. End of career. When she was held up from paying me the equity in the house we owned at the time, she pleaded poverty and then showed up for work in a new Corvette. A few months later, she moved to California and refused any payout on the house, which was on the market. I called the mortgage company directly, something they're not used to, and begged her new address out of them. They have the information and aren't supposed to give it out, but when I explained the situation, the woman at the mortgage company gave it to me. My lawyer carpet bombed my ex who simply assumed she could hide from the mess and I had a check in my hand within the week. So then, she was broke, discredited, in the dump of the IRS and her funding agencies. Good enough. My guy probably saved many other people the trouble of having to deal with her at work. Story 11. In 2009, I deployed for a six-month tour to the Helmand province in Afghanistan. Running at least weekly missions from Leatherneck to Nauzad, we were the only unit that would run that route in the entire AL. It was that bad. A month into the deployment, I was just getting six months into my first real relationship. It was a long distance as I was stationed in NC and she lived back home in NY. We were planning on getting married, but my staff sergeant gave me a little speech and I decided that it was best to wait until after the deployment. She was already cheating on me four months into the relationship. I took it hard. And that's all I thought about for six months while I waited to get back home. I had a bunch of her stuff and she had some of mine and never got any of my stuff back. But she had given me this tiny little dancer trinket to wear in my dog tags. Her mother had given it to her before she ran off so it had some sentimental value to her. Oh, and five months into my deployment, her new boyfriend who she left me for goes back to prison for probation violation. I got a message over Facebook that she just found out she's six months pregnant and it's mine. There's no way you just find out that you're six months pregnant when you weigh 110 pounds soaking wet. It was a sham to get me back. There was no pregnancy. Six months later, I arrived back home. I go into the subway where she works and lo and behold, she's working. I walk in and she goes, welcome to su and cuts off mid-sentence as she sees me with a look of absolute horror on her face. I walk in, walk up to the counter, look her dead in the eyes, set the dancer trinket on the counter, shake my head, turn around and walk out. I could hear her start crying before I got to the door. I'm much more successful out of the military. I have a great job, an amazing girlfriend, and a sweet town home. I'm about to get a dog here soon. I've never blocked her on Facebook, I just don't see her updates in my newsfeed. She'll poke me every once in a while, but I never poke back. It's nice to know that she can watch me be successful without her. And I know her life is in shambles. About once a year, she tries to message me and ask me how I'm doing. But it usually ends with her going on some depressing rant about how she messed up and wishes she never cheated on me and left me. Story 12. My neighbor knocked my dad's motorcycle and simply left it on the floor. It smashed a mirror and they didn't even leave their insurance details. My dad refused to call the police, saying they probably didn't notice, yet I saw them look at it and proceeded to carry on with their usual lives. This annoyed me so much. I decided to call 20 taxis, 5 Chinese takeaways, and a male escort dressed as a policeman to their house all for 1 a.m. in the morning. It was a really childish thing to do, but we all do stupid things, right? What city has 20 different taxi services or one service dumb enough to send 20 cars to one address anyway? I'd love to see their info. Story 13. My best friend since I was 3 years old started texting and flirting, then eventually sleeping with my boyfriend of 7 years. He was apologetic, regretful, and begging for me back, as was she. It was a mistake, they said. It'll never happen again, they said. Until it happened again. Well, my best friend had this obsessive relationship with this guy, Billy, who was so heartbroken by her infidelity, he came to me. 
He felt like a loser having just lost both his girl and his job, so I hired him in my job where I was a manager. We became good friends and my now ex-best friend was going nuts. I then started a rumor that Billy and I were dating and serious about it. She saw us in a car together while I was bringing him home and went ballistic. She started driving like a psycho and texting me saying, How could you do this to me? Why would you do this to me? But I ignored them. I dipped off the road and dropped him off at home and unfortunately had to fire him for stealing money from work. All in all, I got my revenge. I messed with her head. I messed with my ex's head. Got them all upset but never actually did the horrible act of cheating that they did. But they all think I did. And I'm okay with that. Story 14 When my younger brother was about three, my father had to look after him for the day. The plan was that he, after asking his boss, would take him to work for the day. It was office work and he was friendly with his boss so my mom assumed it was no big deal. My father, however, didn't want a toddler distracting him all day. So he left him in the car with a radio on and a carton of apple juice. This is Britain, so it wouldn't overheat, but either way, he was being an At the end of the day, he returned back to his car to drive home, expecting a sleeping toddler who wouldn't tell his mother a thing. Instead, upon his return, he found his son jumping up and down in the front seats to the radio on full blast, then laughing, slipping around, and covered in poop. He had soiled himself, removed his nappy and his fecal matter everywhere. It was smeared all over the driver's seat, the windscreen, the steering wheel, the sat-nav, the driver's window, and even hand-printed on the ceiling. Our dad didn't even know that toddlers could even produce this vast amount of turd. The only car seat that was completely untouched was his own. He's lucky he only had a car full of crap, not a smashed window and a child in the custody of CPS. Story 15 My friend got roofied and taken advantage of by some frat guy about a decade ago at a local high-toned university. Despite a ton of evidence, he was never arrested, never expelled, Never had to face any sort of penalty for this and managed to get my friend labeled a harlot who totally wanted it and was now only pretending it was non-consensual because he wouldn't break up with his girlfriend for her. Pretty charming guy, really. I put capsaicin extract in his eye drops. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you made it this far, I'm sure you'll also enjoy The Best Instant Karma Ever to a Rude Customer. Story 1 was so satisfying. See you there.